Feit later nog. Maar Manchester United is dat concreet? <laughs> Feit later nog. Maar Manchester United is dat concreet? Look at that smile. There he is, Tyrell Malasia. How are we all doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, with a different video today, all focusing on Tyrell Malasia, the 22-year-old final left-back who Manchester United have agreed a deal for. 15 million euros plus what looks like 2 million in add-ons, 17 million overall. How good is he? What do we need to know about him? What I'm going to do in this video is run through a scout report on Tyrell, why Eric Ten Hag is excited by him, why he's brought him to Manchester United, well, bringing him to Manchester United, and why us as fans, why we should be excited about his signing. If you do learn something by the end of it, please make sure you drop a like on the video. I've gone full Dutch here. We've got the Dutch man on the wall there. We've got the Dutch shirt there. And we've got the retro Dutch on here. Why not? We're going triple, quadruple Dutch. I don't know how many more Dutch are going to join, but looks like it's going to be Malasia. It looks like it's going to be De Jong as the first two. But let's run through this. Of course, you've seen this that's kind of flying around. This is a video of Ten Hag when uh, Ajax were playing Feyenoord. Look at that. This, the captions here, whether they're accurate or not. I don't actually particularly know. That kid at left back. Take note of him. We've done more than take a note of him. Man United have swiftly made a move for him. By the way, it's my favourite sort of transfer, this, isn't it? One that you don't really hear too much about, then boom, out of nowhere. United have agreed a deal. But one thing to absolutely understand to begin with here, with Malasia, he is a proper... Look at that. He, this, the, that's his heat map from the Eredivisie last season. He hugs that left flank. And he's really quite a progressive left back. And I think that's probably the thing that's going to excite... United fans the most. We're looking at modern day dominance that we've seen from City and Liverpool. Fullbacks have been crucial to that. Cancelo and Walker at City and Trent and um, Alexander Rott, sorry, not Alexander Rott, and Robertson at Liverpool. They've been crucial to that setup. Luke Shaw, when he's been in his pomp, has been okay, but we've not seen much of that. Let's be honest. And last year he was absolutely abysmal. But that's why we're looking at Tyrell Malice here. So what I'm going to do is run through this report from Mark Lambert. Big up to Mark, who we've had on the channel before, by the way. Speak about Yuri and Timber. This is, this is what he said on Tyrell. I'm going to run through it. And if you wanted to read the full scout report, there's a link in the description. So we know the main stats and the main details. 22-year-old Dutch left back, plays for Feyenoord. Already broken into the Dutch national team as well. And the first thing that Mark mentions there is how much of an athlete he is. Somebody who covers ground from the attacking third to the defensive third. He's somebody who bounds up and down the pitch. He's got a serious amount of energy. Uh, and that's necessary. If you look at the, the key characteristics, again, of, uh, of Robertson, of um, Ancelo, of Trent, of Walker. It's what they do. It's part of the modern game. I'm not sure Gary never would have survived in a modern game as a fullback. I don't think he would have. But United don't have that. With Delo and Wambasaka. It's tentative. It's not energetic enough. It's not, it's not tenacious enough. In terms of his overall strengths, what we're going to do now is take a look at a pizza chart which identifies where he compares to the Eredivisie fullbacks. In terms of top percentiles, the higher the number, the better it is. You can see defensive stats. You can see creative stats and progressive stats here. And from a defensive perspective, you can see one standout here, and that's his sliding tackles. Fyro is somebody who kind of recovers a lot. Because of the runs he makes, because he makes uh, a lot of forward movements, a lot of forward progression, he kind of leaves himself exposed. But he has the energy and the pace to make that recovery tackle. So he's in the top 12% there. But as you can see, defensive duels, only 68. Aerial duels, of course, he's weak. He's, he's a small fullback. But you need, it's, uh, that's a modern fullback. You technically have a lower center of gravity. Not everyone does, but quite a lot of them do. In terms of interceptions, it's not a natural part of his game. But look over here. This is where you see where the natural parts of his game are. Progressive runs per 90, nearly in the top 10%. Progressive passes per 90, top 20. And passes into the penalty area, top 12. Passes into the final third, top 15%. It's obvious where his strengths, his natural strengths lie. And that's going forward. It's what he'd need to learn at Manchester United is that defensive positioning. Now, I suppose in that sense, it's kind of the opposite of Wan-Bissaka. Because Wan-Bissaka was somebody who had the defensive positioning on point. He's somebody who's very good on the one-on-one. -on -one. That's down to his pace, his ability to recover, Tyrell Malassia. Again, you can probably put that down to similarity to Wan-Bissaka, but he's certainly far, far better going forward. In terms of where he operates as a fullback, this, uh, this is sort of where his defensive actions take place. As we saw here, on that pizza chart, interceptions-wise, he's not really doing many interceptions. He's doing far more slide tackles. 
We go over here, as you can see, you can see his interceptions all in his own half. Tackles, and look at that. That's quite an important aspect here. He can win the ball high up the pitch as well. And what we need to do full well under Eric Ten Hag is operate a higher press and a higher line. That's where Tyrell Malassia, in terms of the tackles, would fall into that. And ball recovery, naturally, is going to recover the ball more <laughs> in the left-back position. Almost like he is a left-back. But in terms of progression, this is where I think he gets a bit exciting about Tyrell Malassia and where he's naturally very good at. This chart here shows the progressive passes per 90 and the progressive runs per 90. And look how high up he ranks here, right alongside Masrawi. By the way, look at the anomaly. Go the whole way to the right-hand side. That's why Daily Blind was loved so much by Eric Ten Hag. In terms of progressive passes per 90, over 20 plus progressive passes per 90. That's insane. And in terms of Tyrell, you've got over 10 progressive passes per 90 and over two and a half progressive runs per 90. He's somebody who likes to bring the ball forward. He's somebody who likes to take the ball forward. He's a very progressive player. And that is something that's very, very exciting. By the way, I'm not just using uh, research here from... Uh, from Mark Lambert. Big up to George as well for helping with the research here with all the numbers. Uh, but but Mark's visualizations here, big up to you, Mark. It helps us understand data a bit more. And it helps us understand the profiles of players. It's not going to give us the most detailed scout report, but it will help us understand what type of player he is. And I think that's what this video is really sort of helping you understand. These charts here, these are his key passing stats. And you can see here, expected assists, he's kind of in the middle. And maybe a little bit less than the middle. Well, maybe a bit over the middle, actually. In terms of expect, in terms of actual assists per 90, he is actually quite low. So in terms of his final output and, and that turning into a goal, it's not as good. But maybe that's down to the poor strikers. Maybe that's going to change completely if he's bringing the ball into the box and Cristiano Ronaldo is waiting there. That's something to think for sure. He passes per 90. He does very well here. Just about 0.5 key passes per 90. Look at that. Ranks very highly over here for three passes per 90. About 1.3 th through balls per 90. Passes into the final third. Look, only four players in the area Eredivisie rank ahead of him. Nearly seven into the final third. And passes into the penalty area, again, ranks very, very highly. It's definitely someone to really get excited about. Not just him. Frankie de Jong as well. The Dutch Revolution beginning with Eric Ten Hag and going straight through into a couple of players that we are signing. But in terms of his natural strengths, He's a very progressive player. He's somebody who goes forward a lot. Somebody who is an, as, as, as Mark said in, his, uh, in the first few lines of his report he, here, he is a top athlete. That's the key characteristic to understand here about Tyrell Malassia. He's somebody who will go forward and will come back and will go forward and will come back. And will do that for the full 90 minutes. It will go, offer a threat. It will create overlaps. It will create overloads. And that is something that we need to create space for whoever's operating as our two wingers, for sure. Fullbacks, modern day fullbacks really do create that space. So in terms of taking a look at the tactics chart, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, I don't need to tell you this, but he comes in for Luke Shaw. If he was to start, I do think that Luke Shaw will start the season as our main left back. As the season progresses, though, it might switch towards Malassia, depending on what he does and how, and how he plays. But in terms of how he plays, he's really going to operate, I think, quite a lot in that area there. I reckon towards that you can probably imagine his average position as a season progresses, probably probably being around about there. He's not going to be a, a left back that sits back in a deep back four and sort of waits in shape. He's somebody who will really want to bring the ball forward, make himself available for that position, whether it's De Jong alongside him there or Fred, it doesn't really matter. But I'm very interested and excited to see what that can do to our left-hand side. Maybe he can really... Turn and basically, I would say that would be his main overall position. Really attacking down that left hand side. If it's Sancho playing there, creating a good partnership with him, getting the overlaps to go down here, find the balls into the box. Defensively, that's, I wouldn't say it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a weak and natural part of his game. As I said, if we go back to the pizza chart here, look at that, man, found it. You can see where he needs to improve, right? You can see where the natural aspects are to his game. And Eric Ten Hag is a man who backs himself as a coach. There's so many players that have come through Ajax's academy and developed into top-level players. He's one of those players who can, for sure, develop. He's one of those players here who has natural... He's a natural athlete. 
natural ability going forward. The strengths really come in progression and bringing the ball forward. But he needs to work on his defense in positioning. But he has the pace to recover from it when he's not in position. That overall is the main thing you need to understand about him. Gorka here with some standout stats. Last year, compared to defenders in the Eredivisie, he took the most shots and the most take-ons completed, the most successful through balls. Second most uh, most uh, passing to the final third. Third most tackles made. As I said, and I've told you this, those tackles are mainly the slide tackles, a lot of recovery tackles rather than interceptions and positioning himself correctly. He will need to learn that, no doubt, at Manchester United and learn that under Eric Ten Hag. But for me, looking at that, 15 million euros plus 2 million in add-ons, a very exciting type of signing. The, the sort of signings I want us to be making from here on in. The next few years, I want these sorts of players that we've identified that have clear prospects, have clear natural talents, but are far from the fin finished product yet. But after a couple of years, who said he can't be? I hope this video helped you understand it. Big up to Mark for, for the scout report. Big up to George for helping with, this, with the research for the video too. This is a signing that definitely excites me. 15 million euros plus two. It's a bit of a risk-free signing. And if he can develop on what he's naturally good at and improve his defense in, from a defensive perspective, which he needs to do in the Premier League straight away, I think we've got a real talent on our hands there. Let me know what you think about that though in the comments below. Full Dutch, full Dutch here. I might just go Amsterdam on holiday. Why not? <laughs>